The Imaging and Devices Pillar of the Bioengineering Department at George Mason University comprises the Biomedical Imaging Laboratory, directed by Dr. Siddharth Sikdar and Parag Chitnis. Other faculty involved include Dr. Shani Ross and Amir Khan. We are physically located in Peterson Hall in Krasno Hall on the Fairfax campus of George Mason. Researchers in this pillar focus on development of novel techniques for imaging and image guided interventions at multiple scales from cellular to whole body. The goals of this interdisciplinary research is to contribute the basic understanding of physiology, utilize novel imaging methods in clinical research for understanding disease processes, develop image guided therapeutic strategies for personalized medicine, and developing and evaluating novel assistive techniques such as prosthetic control systems utilizing wearable imaging sensors to improve function. Hello, my name is Parag Chitnis. I'm an Associate Professor of Bioengineering at George Mason University. And today I wanted to discuss with you some active projects in our lab. My main areas of expertise are in ultrasound photoacoustic imaging, image reconstruction, and image-guided therapies. And I wanted to cover two projects in my lab today. One involves ultrasound-mediated localized drug delivery which can be used for treating uh, brain tumors or very difficult to heal wounds. Second is photoacoustic imaging for understanding the brain. Specifically, we're interested in understanding neurovascular coupling. So for the first project, we are developing ultrasound methods for localized drug delivery. Specifically, we're doing two things. One is developing flexible ultrasound transducers that can be integrated with bandages. Second, we are developing biomaterials, uh, often made from hydrogels, which can be loaded with therapeutic compounds and can be made responsive to ultrasound. So the ultrasound transducers can then do two things. One, they can image the devices and tissue and help with targeting and treatment monitoring. Second, they can precisely focus ultrasonic energy at the devices and actuate the release of those therapeutic compounds. In a previous study, we demonstrated the use of NIPAM hydrogels, and uh, we showed that the fluorescent compound was sequestered nicely within the device before ultrasonic actuation. And just five minutes after actuation, we can see a nice release of the fluorescent compound from that device. So in this project, which is funded by, funded by DARPA, we have a consortium of several institutions led by Columbia University, and that includes MIT, Harvard Medical uh, Center as well. And uh, we are working actively to use these methods and develop them for treating traumatic uh, injuries suffered by military personnel. In another project, we're using photoacoustic imaging to better understand brain function. So photoacoustic imaging is a hybrid imaging technique which combines the benefit of light and sound. So optics is sensitive to molecules or function, and ultrasound can penetrate through tissue better. So together, we get the molecular specificity, but at deeper uh, locations and tissue. So this could be useful for studying the brain through intact brain tissue and skull. Photoacoustics have already been established as a very good imaging modality for looking at blood and hemodynamic function. So in our lab, we are collaborating with uh, nanoparticle experts to develop voltage reporters that can, be, you know, that can give us a voltage readout. For example, here we have combined a patch clamp and a fluorescence microscope to test how well the nanoparticles that we have developed uh, work for giving us a voltage readout. As you can see here, when the voltage has been modulated of a cell membrane, we can see that the optical readout from those nanoparticles also modulates along the same way. Now, we are also developing in silico simulations to design photoacoustic sensor arrays that would give us good imaging in the mouse brain. And we're collaborating with uh, experts at Penn State uh, to develop flexible photoacoustic sensors that can be mounted on the animal so we could perform these studies in an awake and behaving animal. Long-term goal of this work is to develop a toolkit that can be used to answer several pertinent neuroscience questions. So both of the projects that, projects that I described today uh, have openings for graduate students, and students from a variety of backgrounds can come and work with us, including biochemistry, instrumentation, signal processing, 
In addition to those two projects that I described, a third active area of research in my lab involves uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence for photoacoustic imagery reconstruction. Specifically, we are developing deep learning methods such as convolutional neural networks that are optimized for imaging the mouse brain, especially when the data is acquired from sensors that suffer from sparsity or limited view. Funding is available for all of these projects, and we look forward to hearing from you. Hello, my name is Siddhartha Sekdar. I'm a, a professor in the biomedical imaging and devices pillar. My uh, main area of expertise is in imaging, all the way from um, image analysis methods to image instrumentation and devices. My lab works on a translational research to study the neuromusculoskeletal underpinnings of disability. And our research spans uh, both basic science, clinical research, as well as uh, technology commercialization. We are currently developing uh, new quantitative um, imaging methods uh, to, in investigating disease mechanisms of chronic pain, um, as well as developing assistive technologies for individuals with uh, mobility impairment. So I would like to highlight one um, project in my lab. Um, this is a, a project um, that is funded by the National Institutes of Health uh, National Science Foundation, as well as the DOD. Um, and the, the idea for the project is to develop uh, the next uh, generation of uh, prosthetic control devices. Um, so in the field of prosthetic control, um, surface electromyography has been the predominant method for sensing uh, muscle uh, activity uh, and inferring the volitional content, uh, volitional intent of users who um, have uh, lost limbs. Um, the, there are well-known limitations with uh, electromyography, um, including um, poor signal to noise, the uh, inability to differentiate between muscles that are deeply embedded inside the tissue. Um, and so in my lab, we have been using a new method known as sonomyography that uses ultrasound for uh, sensing the volitional intent. Um, and so the idea for uh, sonomyography is that we um, image the the cross section of the forearm using ultrasound, and we can actually infer the, the, the intent from the patterns of muscle activity. So when a, a subject is trying to do an index finger flexion, we see a, a particular muscle group um, um, that's uh, activated when the, the same subject does a middle finger flexion, a completely different muscle um, the group gets activated. So we can then train a computer algorithm to tell the difference between these two types of um, uh, image sequences, and then use that to control uh, a prosthetic device. Uh, uh, so for example, here is a user who is controlling um, this prosthetic hand uh, based on um, the, the signals that we are uh, getting from the, the muscles. So we are currently testing this in um, amputee subjects. Uh, so um, we can uh, similarly record um, ultrasound images from the forearm, residual forearm of these uh, subjects. And we are uh, testing whether they are, uh, how they compare against uh, conventional electromyography. So there is one um, case uh, where uh, the user is trying to use their conventional um, the electromyography based uh, prosthetic hand and you can see that he's uh, struggling to uh, pick up these blocks um, and so um, he's compensating using his uh, trunk as well as other um, sort of compensatory movements. Um, if the same subject um, is now instrumented with an ultrasound transducer to sense the muscle activity while they're imagining these movements, uh, you can see that they are, have a better control over their uh, terminal device so they're standing up straighter um, not using as many compensatory movements. So uh, this is an ongoing project that is uh, and that being done in collaboration with uh, industry partners, um, Infinite Biomedical Technologies. Uh, we are also working with a number of clinical partners, including uh, Medicine National Rehab Hospital, Hanger Clinic, and Walter Reed National Medical Center. We have a number of open uh, positions in our lab uh, for uh, graduate student projects. Uh, there is a project for uh, developing wearable ultrasound imaging systems, uh, another project for developing next generation prosthetic control systems, um, and another for quantification of musculoskeletal function. And we have funding for all these uh, projects available. Thank you. In addition to my role in the Department of Bioengineering, I'm also the director for the Center for Adaptive Systems of Brain-Body Interactions. This is a transdisciplinary center at the university uh, with a vision to enable individuals with disabilities to participate in needed and desired life roles and activities. At the center, we have a number of uh, state-of-the-art uh, facilities um, uh, for um, developing assistive technologies, for neuromodulation, for studying human movement, um, as well as uh, multi-scale imaging, um, all the way from um, 
small animals all the way to humans. We have uh, a number of um, the faculty in the center who have brought disciplinary expertise in many different disciplines uh, from engineering, computer science, um, the cognitive and behavioral neuroscience, uh, psychology, um, criminology, social work, mathematics, and physics. Um, we have a national research, uh, National Science Foundation funded uh, research traineeship program um, that's run as part of the center um, and a number of bioengineering or PhD students participate in this. Uh, we have funding available for this, uh, these uh, traineeship, uh, traineeship program. Um, you can find more information about it um, on our website at casb.gme.edu slash training.